what uh, what do you all have going on? Tell me what's going on. As always, we're collecting blood products for all these hospitals across Kentucky, all the way from Paducah to Pikeville. I think we have about 90 hospitals now, and the need for blood is always there. You don't predict when you're going to need it. So just trying to keep those hospital shelf supplies handy. And in Gallatin County, you obviously, we have blood drive here at the library, but you also have one at the high school? We do. We have three at the high school. Oh, okay. And the Kentucky Blood Center collects about 17% of our blood products from high schools and colleges. So you know how important that mm-hmm. is. And that's why in the summertime we are desperate for donors or when schools are out during the Christmas holidays. What's the hardest thing uh, about getting a, a blood drive started or going or maintaining? Well, I need to I probably bring this to people's attention is the chairperson the one that gets the uh word out because we could have a blood drive here but what if you didn't let anybody in the community know about it then nobody would come so i believe it's how much effort the chairperson puts into it and so working with the high school what is what is that process like well that process they want to get out of class too (laughs) (laughs) but we are educating them on the need for blood because how many of us think that you can't make blood products i probably never thought about that we can make artificial hearts artificial ears but we cannot make blood products and that's the need for the blood because uh, the kentucky blood center uses over 400 pints a day sharing it with all those hospitals so that's, we try to educate the high schoolers. And if they have a good experience, then when they go to college, they'll probably donate. Then when they move up and maybe they work at a corporation, we have blood drives there. Or then they could go to a community blood drive. We have a lot of retirees that I think visit community blood drives, though. So 400 a day, and then and, and we're happy when we have 30, 30 units we provide here in a, in a month. So we're... Well, so the, the need is great is what I'm getting the at. The need is great, but we'll probably have eight mobile units go out a day, and then we have eight fixed sites a day. So that's 16 different ways to collect blood products. And yours is a, a little bit higher than average blood drive um, based on the participation, actually. You do a great job up here. People are people are very giving in Gallatin County. The Okay, so ex- explain to me that. So you have all these units. Are they out of a central area, and you kind of go across the state or do you have many many different centers or how does that work well we do go across the state as i said in paducah we will go down there every eight weeks when donors are eligible every 56 days and we will have a blood drive down there a regular blood drive just like i spoke with you i think they're on thursdays so we collect um i think about 70 units Hmm. down there because that's the only blood drive in paducah there there aren't any other ones but then in central Kentucky, we do have quite a few more. And then even in eastern Kentucky and southeastern Kentucky, we have fixed sites in Somerset, Pikeville, uh, two in Lexington, two in Louisville, one in Frankfurt, one in Corbin. So you can see they're all across Kentucky to make it convenient for the donor. You're very busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we are. We have, I think, at least 250 people that work for the Kentucky Blood Center, and that's people that are phlebotomists. That might be people that test the blood, people like me and account manager. We go out and set up the blood drives. Now, for someone who's never uh, done it or been involved, kind of how does that process work? Kind of take me through that. Like, if you let's say, if, if for example, when you're here at this library, how does that work to, to give and to be involved? Well, first you have to know about the blood drive, just as I said, and you've decided I maybe want to help somebody. Um, Maybe my father has cancer and he's using blood products. About 50% of our our blood might go to cancer patients across the state. And so you've decided I'm going to donate blood. You have to prepare to donate blood. It's not like uh, you're fasting when you go into the doctor. You need to eat well. You need to eat foods that have protein in them that are iron rich maybe nuts green vegetables so a couple of days before start thinking about eating well also hydrating well because you're going to give a pint of the fluid that are in it's in your body so you need to prepare for that uh, we like for you to sign up for it to know that you're coming so we can staff it appropriately then when you come um they are going to ask you some questions, and those are called screening questions. Some people do those online before they get here. It takes about 10 minutes. You need to know the medicines that you're taking. So if you are taking a blood thinner, then you would be deferred. 
If you're taking medicine for diabetes or high blood pressure, that's fine. So know the medicines that you're taking so you can answer these questions correctly. If you've traveled outside the country, there are places that have high malaria um, exposures, so you might be deferred for that. So you go through that process of registering. You need to bring a picture ID. Then you answer the questions. And then the process of donating blood takes under 10 minutes. When you actually get on the bed, it doesn't take very long. And then we ask you to stay for about 10 minutes afterwards so you can have a snack and make sure that you feel good. So when you come into our building, you are all rolling all that equipment in for the day. And so it's, it's kind of transforming our meeting room for that day into, yes. a, into a blood center, which is, I think, wonderful. It's yeah. a, it's, I think it's a great service that you all provide. And it's always, we always look forward to having you here. So I appreciate that. Um, we appreciate you because you've offered us the site to do the blood drive. Well, what, um, what, do you, what are your, some, I guess, I guess for some promotions you do to kind of engage and kind of keep people involved? And I mean, people are going to give anyway, but just a little they kind are. of added on. A lot of people are, um, want to help because they've known someone that has needed blood. For example, they might have had a child and needed a blood transfusion then. But we do give a T-shirt usually as an incentive around the holidays, as I had said earlier, when we see blood donations drop, we give that hoodie sweatshirt in January. In the past, in the summertime, we have given away Toyota vehicles, but I do not think that we are going to do that again this summer. We do try to change things mm -hmm. up, but we try to make it exciting. Uh, we do a couple of UK events. Big Blue Crush is in November and that is a competition with Tennessee and Kentucky. We've been doing that for over 30 years. Okay. We've won it for the past several years, I must say. And so it does something to be tight. proud of. Yeah, something to be proud of. So yeah. explain a little bit more. What is the competition then on that? The competition is the week before Thanksgiving where we're going into a holiday. We know we're not going to be collecting a lot of blood the mm -hmm. week of Thanksgiving, uh, that we have this huge blood drive at UK's campus. And then some smaller groups, maybe uh, across the state, will be a part of it too. And we have a special T-shirt marketing it. And then the University of uh, Tennessee is our competitor. And we keep a score every day, and people are very interested in it. But that gets us through the holiday season, at least through Thanksgiving. And blood has a shelf life of 42 days, so it gets us almost through Christmas because we'll get an abundance of blood then. And why is that? Because people want to participate in Big Blue Crush. That might be the only time of the year that they donate. Okay, so it's so, it's so successful and it's able to carry you through those 42 days. Yes. And that's and obviously that's by design. You've all thought this out and you have this and, and, it, and it works very well and people get excited. Yes, and on campus they know they're going to get that special t-shirt. Right. Um, and people are proud of those t-shirts. When we go to high schools the donors might wear the shirt we've given before they want people to know that they're a blood donor we see those t-shirts out and about well and it's building on that enthusiasm seems very important to yes to keep it going but then also too it is something to be proud of forgiving and making a difference yes and those students at uk now might have given in high school so we want them to have that good experience and so and so, obviously, then you, you repeat that as you do here at the, the school. You said you have three events? Yes, we have three blood drives a year here. Okay. We give scholarships to high schools based on units of blood collected, and that's always an incentive for someone at the school to promote the blood drive, too. You know, people don't want uh, – some of the teachers and the uh, staff might not want to let students out of their class, but then they see – Oh, these students are getting a scholarship out of this. So, and it's only three times a year. So, it's I mean, only three times a year, which is which is wonderful. And so, typically, what do you hope like at, at the the school? What how many pints are you units are you hoping to get? I think that we collected between thirty five and forty pints of blood last December. That was the oh. first drive of the year, and then that will build and get a little bit larger every time because sixteen year olds may donate. So students that weren't 16 in the fall, now they'll be 16 in March when they have their blood drive. And then they'll finish out the year with one more blood drive in May. So during the course of the year, more students will turn 16. And those students have to have their parent permission. However, for 17 or older, you don't have to have a parent okay. permission. Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of nice. It's 
one less thing to sign yes. <laughs> at that point and, and they're wanting to give. And so you build that momentum every single year. So, I mean, that's, I think that's, I think that's amazing. Those numbers. Yes. And we were just talking about this morning, about that this morning, because pre COVID our numbers were about 40, 45. And so we're building back up to those pre COVID levels. And that's what has been the demise of blood centers across the United States is we've had a hard time picking up those numbers. Okay. Number one, people are not working in offices anymore. They're right. working remotely. So if you're having a blood drive at your company, for example, Lexmark in Lexington, they have 2,000 people that used to work there. Now they do not. Hopefully some of those donors are coming in sooner, though. But at high schools, we've seen those numbers just barely start to come back this year. So it takes time to build up. Oh, it and, does. And then so hopefully next December it's stronger for the next year and the next year I mean as you build on and stuff like that yes. so so you'll have two more coming up though this year in, in the high school yes and then and then with us it's it's always monthly right I'm trying to think yours, is, yours are bi-monthly every eight weeks <laughs> so I have at least six or seven drives here your drive is one that gets the hoodies in January too and I was just spoke, speaking with the high school and they're going to start doing a January blood drive because high school students love hoodies <laughs> <laughs> They're seeing it, and it's it's working. Your marketing is working, yes, working on is. this. Yes, it is. We had the largest January since 2013 with those hoodies. We just got those numbers this morning. Well, congratulations. Well, I did not have any snow days or snow days that affected our blood drives. We had a few snow days, but not that affected our blood drives. Yeah, so far, I mean, to knock on every form of wood, it's been an interesting winter as far as our weather. And, when you know, and we, we've had a couple days, but... But yeah. it seems to be they were on the weekends when we would have bad weather, though, too. And people might have more sicknesses in the winter, though, and then you see that a regular donor now has a sinus infection, so that mm-hmm. knocks them out of donating. But to have these regular blood drives that we can count on, those are the most important blood drives that we have. So your community blood drive in Gallatin County is considered the top-ranking blood drives. Well, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. And thank you so very much for coming in. Well, thank you so much for asking me because the more people know about it, the more it just touches their heart.